Then we started working on this guy. Then we brought in the front end to the chain, you know, the virtual microphone system. Uh, in case you're not familiar with it, you know, it, it starts off with a really great reference quality large diaphragm condenser. Uh, and then it goes into a very clean style uh, ultra linear preamp. And then we have modeling software in the workstation, which can turn that, you know, blank canvas sound into one of many different microphones, preamps. And, you know, it gives you the option to have that virtual mic locker. And then last NAM, just a few weeks ago, we completed the ecosystem. We completed the ecosystem with a virtual uh, analog interface that we call the VRSA. And there it is behind me, and you can see it plugged in in our rack. Thank you for holding your applause. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, so the VRSA. Let's talk about the VRSA because the VRSA, uh, you know, from the front of things, it looks like a it's just a it's an eight channel interface, but but it's a, a bit more than that. And I'll I'll hopefully convince you why that's the case. Uh, first of all, we are not. Uh, the first ones in the interface game. Okay, we're kind of late to this game, so we had to really come out swinging. Uh, so we we had two words during the development and manufacturing of the VRSA, and those two words were no compromise, no compromise. This is going to have to be the most you know state of the art interface that we could possibly make. So as you can see, the f the first slide is about the A to D conversion. Okay, we're going to talk about we're going to get geeky and talk about some components. You guys cool with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's get geeky. All right, I love geeks. Um, the A to D's and the D to A's on, on any converter are obviously important. We use the top of the line AKM 5578 converters up to 124 dB SNR. 124 dB SNR on the ADC, and I believe the DACs are 123. This is far above what the competition is doing. Uh, of course, if, you know, some of you guys are techs out there. You guys know that you know, a simple, you know, really great A to D chip is important, but it's not the most important thing if you're going to have an, an entire audio interface. It sounds amazing because the next thing is the analog, um, the analog section. So we used uh, OPA 1612s uh, on the inputs and outputs. I mean, these are really high-quality chips. These are four or five times the cost of what some of our competitors are using on their analog sections. Okay? Not the cheapest way to do it, but it's the best way to do it. No compromise. We use WEMA German capacitors and the audio path. Again, not the cheapest way to do it, but it's the no compromise way to do it. Uh, in the DIs, I mean, I, I, let me just say that we, of course, during the development here, we took the lids off of quite a few of our competitors' interfaces. And we saw some interesting stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, some of these are great interfaces, but, you know, unfortunately, like any manufacturing company, some of these guys have to cost cut somewhere. And it's kind of intriguing, to, to say the least, about where they would cost cut. Some people would cost cut with the DI. How many people use a DI for their guitars and basses? You know, kind of important. So we did not skimp out there. We use a true JFET DI. And it sounds really, really good. If you're plugging in, you know, a guitar or bass, you can plug it in, get a really clean signal. Then you can use one of our, you know, preamp interfaces to give it some beef and some virtual analog warmth. Uh, so that's the DI. Uh, 